Good morning. My name is Jerry Shao, and I'm one of the co-founders of Atlas Labs. Today, I'll be giving a presentation about how Atlas scales the Solana virtual machine. So first, what is Atlas? Atlas is a new implementation of the SVM. Uh, and one key thing is that we wrote it from scratch. So there are a lot of SVM implementations out there, uh, but Atlas is one that we built completely in-house based on our knowledge of how Solana works. Atlas is the blockchain for verifiable finance. Verifiable finance combines the performance of digital finance with the transparency of DeFi. Under the hood, it uses a new implementation of the Solana virtual machine. The key reason for this is to keep the execution environment mostly backwards compatible with Solana mainnet. And the easiest way to do this is to respect the same application-specific interfaces or wire format that Solana uses. Some of its properties include uh, low latency, high throughput, low jitter, and custom sequencing rules. In this talk, I'll talk about three of the ways that Atlas scales the SVM. First, I'll talk about how Atlas scales reads. Second, I'll talk about how it scales writes. And lastly, I'll talk about how it scales replication. So the first topic is how Atlas scales reads. And this is via the Atlas RPC and a module that we're calling RPCX. But before we talk about any of this, I want to talk about um, how you scale reads in Web2. Web uh, scaling web applications in Web2 is pretty much a solved problem. The way it works is that a user will load an application on, on their computer, on a phone, and this will read information from some backend database service, and these are usually read-only read services. Then the users will interact with these apps, uh, which will issue some sort of state transition to these backend databases. Uh, and usually this will go to the primary instance. And the way that this all gets organized on the back end is that you have these things called read replicas, which are copies of the primary state. And you have the primary instance, which keeps the canonical record of all the changes that occur. Uh, and this is what you kind of call a horizontal scaling. This is what basically every, uh, every application in Web2 uses to, to serve hundreds of millions of users. The key insight here is that scaling reads is a very solved problem if you can make an unbounded number of synchronized copies to the primary instance. Sadly, this is not the case with the Solana RPC. Uh, with Solana, there are, are two main problems. And the, first, the previous slide directly relates to the first problem that I mentioned, which is that the read RPC implementation on Solana is directly coupled with the validator client that's responsible for writing the state updates. The second problem is that even after the RPCs serve the user's data, the client-side application needs to perform a lot of bespoke computation to make that data usable. Uh, and so here's a tweet from Mert saying that uh, it's the RPC's fault. Um, and many times it actually is, unfortunately. But I'll talk about how Atlas solves this. The first way that Atlas scales reads is via read-write separation. Unlike the Agave client, the Atlas RPC node is completely separated from the sequencer. Uh, in Solana land, you'd call this the leader. And this satisfies a key constraint um, of, of just designing read interfaces in general, is that RPC nodes exist to serve reads and not writes. Uh, and naturally, the way to architect this should look a lot like a read replica. So the way that Atlas structures it is that the sequencer is responsible for forming state updates. That's the primary instance. It publishes its state updates and state transitions via channel to uh, any downstream subscriber that's able to reproduce those updates. And that downstream subscriber, a replay node, becomes a read replica. The second way that we scale reads is via this new innovation we're calling RPCX. Anyone who's worked with Solana before knows that the data returned by the Solana RPC is extremely difficult to process as a developer. Uh, you're given this uh, raw stream of bytes that's extremely difficult to, to work with. Uh, and instead, what we do on Atlas is we, read directly, uh, we directly send JSON formatted data from the RPC nodes. Uh, and the idea here is that you move complexity away from the client and towards the server, which I think makes a lot of sense. Uh, the way that this works at the back end is that Atlas supports the ability for users to upload custom parsers or custom codes directly, directly to their servers uh, in, in Wasm. So you, you build a WebAssembly module that can parse accounts or transactions, and this code is executed before it is sent back to the user. What are the main benefits here? Well, the first one is that it reduces bandwidth. 
Uh, I know that in Solana land, we kind of think all about increasing bandwidth, but reduced bandwidth is an extremely desirable property for API design. Um, and on the client side, the main benefit here is that you reduce the compute and the complexity. And so it's easier to build applications that the users actually need, as opposed to spending all your time parsing bespoke data from Solana. Let me show you a few examples. So I'm sure no one can read the screen, and that's totally OK. This is what it looks like to fetch an account from Solana. Um, specifically, this is uh, me making a request to grab a Phoenix market uh, against Atlas Testnet, but using the Solana RPC. If I was processing this data on a front end, I think there's a number of problems here. The first problem is that I would have to decode and parse all of this information, which means I have to write a custom parser to understand how to interpret this random stream of bytes. The second problem, which I think is a little bit more subtle, is that every single time this account updates or this data updates, I have to pass all these bytes uh, in between the network and the client. Uh, and this is a fundamental bandwidth problem, where if you want to have a snappy application and you're running on uh, a low-speed network connection, you cannot functionally produce a good application if you're hammering the network. You're, you're at your bandwidth capacity. And so there's a clear mismatch between uh, what the interface is uh, intending to do and what the user has to do to process the information. This is what it looks like on Atlas. It's the same account, the same underlying process, but when you make the request to the server, uh, you get the data back in parsed JSON, uh, which is extremely useful for the application developer because their logic is a lot simpler now. All they have to do is read these fields, and they can just render data on their, on their application without any problems. Um, and you also solve this complicated bandwidth problem, because now, if you want to subscribe to any data changes, all you really need to do is or subscribe to this small packet without any client-side processing. Uh, we think that this is the future of full-stack smart contract application development. The second way that Atlas scales the SVM is through the right layer. And this is via opinionated sequencing. In general, blockchains are known to be credibly neutral. The way that I interpret this is that blockchains treat all packets and all transactions as equal. I think this is the one thing that the IBRL folks get wrong. Uh, because I don't think you can be optimizing for efficient on-chain finance uh, if you don't discriminate on packets or on transactions. Opinionated sequencing means that some transactions are more important than other ones. Market makers canceling and placing quotes should take precedence over toxic takers uh, who are crossing the spread. And when you protect these liquidity providers, it lowers the costs for all users to transact on-chain. So it produces a positive externality for the users of, of this platform. Another area where opinionated sequencing makes a lot of sense is uh, via Oracle updates. Um, you can ensure that they can land on chain. If a lending protocol cannot depend on a reasonable SLA for these price updates, it means they have to wider their risk limits around liquidations. And the consequence of this is that it lowers the on-chain capital efficiency. There's also this general problem where you want these updates the most when the chain is the most volatile. So when the prices are going haywire off-chain, uh, that's when it becomes the most important to land your Oracle updates, the most important to land your cancel operations. And if you don't have a way to ensure that those get in, it creates a, a negative effect on-chain. And the key idea here is that you want to actually reserve bandwidth. The IBRL philosophy is to make the pipe as big as possible. But if you reject the idea of credible neutrality, you can make fast lanes for privileged transactions. And this really opens up the design space. You can create speed bumps for takers, um, which means that you can tilt the scales in favor of liquidity providers. You can also introduce things that look like cron jobs, interval-based events uh, that make a lot of sense for making sure that uh, important transactions land when they need to land. One example of this is a per funding settlement period or a vesting schedule for something like a bond contract. The way that Atlas allows for opinionated sequencing is by putting all the transactions into a directed acyclic graph, or a DAG. Uh, the way this works is, is not super complicated. Uh, you can view transactions as nodes in a graph, and a transaction A is con connected to transaction B if they have overlapping accounts, and if the rank or priority of A is higher than the priority of B, or the rank is lower. Same underlying idea. And the, the elegant thing about this is you can implement this opinionated sequencing algorithm by just changing the rank function. Uh, and 
it's pretty clear to see that this still supports parallel execution, because if you have nodes in the DAG that are not connected directly, they can be scheduled on different threads simultaneously. The last way that uh, Atlas scales the SVM is by scaling replication. And this is via real-time state root calculation. Building a real-time state root is a complex software scaling task. Uh, the way that we did it was we modified the Atlas eBBF interpreter store operation to provide performance hints to the Atlas account hasher. And the, the consequence of this is that we're able to produce a new complete hash of the full Atlas account state in under 50 milliseconds per update. Um, the main benefit of being able to do this is that you reduce consistency risk across your different read replicas. When you have uh, a complex system like Atlas or a complex system like Solana, you need to make sure that your nodes are all in sync. Uh, you have one primary instance, and you have some n arbitrary number of read replicas. And one failure scenario is that your read replica state is inconsistent with your sequencer or leader state. Uh, once you have one canonical state root or a way to recognize that your state is valid or identical, it's easy to ensure these invariants that can hold where your replica node matches your, your primary sequencer node. The other benefit here is that you enable real-time verification and validity gadgets. Because the state is Merkleized, it's natural to build inclusion and exclusion proofs for accounts, uh, which means that it should also be easy to construct a light client. And the state root itself is a natural target for supporting zero-knowledge proofs of execution. If you found any of this stuff interesting, please check out Atlas Testnet. All the features that I mentioned today are live in production. Uh, here are three links to the Atlas Explorer, uh, the Atlas homepage, and the Atlas Twitter account. And then finally, if you found any of these technical problems challenging and exciting, I encourage you to apply to our elite engineering team at Ellipsis Labs. We're always looking for more talent to further innovate in modern finance. Thank you so much.